isn't going to be a very long broadcast by the way, I'll tell you that now. At least I don't think it's going to be a very long broadcast, it depends on how long the queue is at the post office, if they're still open. I hope they are, otherwise I'll have to come back again. Park's full. Wonderful. Can't get on the car park. There's the O2 phone mast. We'll give it another go in the car park, but I don't think there's much chance. Has the cast been going off? I think it has, hasn't it?
It's time for the latest BBC News from Katrina Young. The number of unemployed people in Britain has risen to its highest level for 17 years. The figure went up by 128,000 in the three months to October to 2.64 million. More than half of the increase was in the public sector. David Cameron told MPs at Prime Minister's Questions in the Commons that the rise was bad news and said the important thing was to ensure economic growth. The supermarket chain Morrison's has announced it's to create more than 7,000 jobs next year when it opens 25 new stores. The company says another 300 people will be employed at a new distribution centre in Somerset. Scottish and Southern Energy is to create up to 250 jobs at Pontypridd in South Wales. The French president, Nicolas Sarkozy, is reported to have described David Cameron as behaving like a stubborn child at last week's Brussels summit. A French newspaper says Mr Sarkozy told a meeting of party advisers that Mr Cameron was obsessed with protecting the city of London as if it were some sort of offshore tax haven. One of the men accused of killing the teenager Stephen Lawrence has finished giving evidence at the Old Bailey. Gary Dobson, who's 36, denies murder. His mother was also questioned and said her son was at home in South East London making a toast on the evening of Stephen Lawrence's death in 1993. Buckingham Palace has announced that during next... Edinburgh will travel as widely as possible across England, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland. Other members of the royal family will join in, visiting 15 other countries, including Australia, Singapore, the Solomon Islands and Bali. And the weather forecast, it will continue to be a cold and breezy day for most places, with sunshine and occasionally heavy wintry showers in places. Later on, winds will ease in many areas, but a frost and patchy fog may fall in the overnight. That's the news and weather, just after two minutes past one. Katrina Young, thank you. On time for our lunchtime concert now, returning to our composer of the week, Beethoven, and to our associate Luke's, with the latest in the two-week piano sonata cycle. It's introduced by Stephen Johnson. Welcome back to LSO Secrets in London. In our last program in this complete Beethoven piano sonata cycle, we met the composer and his most playful romantic heroics couldn't have been much further away. In today's recital, Nicholas Angelich turns us back towards the darker side of Beethoven. The famous Moonlight Sonata, the Sonata in A-flat, Opus 26, and the first of the three Opus 10 sonatas composed towards the end of Beethoven's Beethoven Spectrum. Opus 10 number one is in the key of C minor, a key strongly identified with Beethoven's most tragic utterances. It's been called his Promethean key, a tonal arena for some of his most titanic musical struggles. After hearing Mozart's piano concerto in C minor, before one Beethoven is set to be a we should never be able to live up to this. But it doesn't seem to have been for very long. In fact, the sonata mm. in one shows Beethoven bravely striding out in Mozart's shadow. So it's only seen by a piano sonata. It's clearly the model of the first two movements, where some of the twists and turns become one of the extreme Beethoven's hands. It's in the finale, though, that Beethoven rarely comes on his own, putting a tense to each of six note motive for his songs and dramatic paces. 
Doesn't appear we're having much success this afternoon, does it? Things keep dropping off. How many times has it gone off so far? Two or three times? <coughs> 23 times Midwesty. Oh, in that case I'm not going to bother doing any more today. See that funny little car go past then?
too cold to be running like that guy was. Way too cold. Five and a half degrees it is. It's five degrees outside at the moment, so definitely doesn't just look like winter, it is winter. Anyway, do I detect a slight um, disagreement going on in the chat here? Midwesty, are you trying to wind up Bridget or something, or what? I don't seem to have a very good signal here actually at the moment so uh, uh, for one reason or another I don't think I'll be doing any more broadcasting this afternoon I was going to do another one but I don't think I'll bother right so uh, I think he's winding you up Julius actually so uh, anyway look I'm going to shut down now and get myself some dinner and I might be going out again might be well, go to a Cafe Nero then, or um, whatever you've got in your part of the world. Well, what coffee shops do they have in the Midwest, anyway? I don't know whether... They, whether do they actually have them over there, or what? I'm going to have tea, anyway. So if I do go out again, it's going to be about um, 3 o'clock or something like that. So it's now about uh, 1.15 here, so you can work it out for yourselves when 3 o'clock will be, alright? In the meantime, I'm, I'm going, I'm disappearing. I'm about to disappear. 3pm my time, yes, that's right. That's when I'm going to pick up the uh, the monitors, all being well. So I'm now going to stop broadcast, so I should be going off like now.